So as you know, this guy, um, Tom Perkins, he's the co-founder of Klein Perkins Caulfield & Byers, a uh, Silicon Valley uh, venture capitalist firm. Uh, he is no longer with them, as they have made very clear uh, in the wake of his uh, letter to the Wall Street Journal saying that the demonization of the 1% in this country is reminiscent of Kristallnacht. Um, so he went on to clarify his comments on Bloomberg West the other day. Uh, this um, a compilation was put together by Gawker. I think they did a fairly fair job in not taking his stuff out of context. Um, because in context, it sounds just as crazy. It's important to note, too, before listening to this video, that this is supposed to be his apology. That's right. This is um, <laughs> uh, presumably his crisis management team said, you got to get out there. We don't want this to... Uh... At the very least, contextualize in quotation marks, not make him look even worse. Right. Here it is. Um, Tom Perkins failing at that. <laughs> They broke the windows in the Wells Fargo Bank. They marched up to our automobile strip on Van Ness Avenue and broke all the windows in all the luxury car dealerships. It, it's absurd to <laughs> demonize the rich for being rich and for doing what the rich do, which is get richer. I think the rich as a class are threatened through higher taxes, higher regulation. Let the rich do what the rich do, which is get richer. You are a multimillionaire. No, I'm not a billionaire. I'm You're a multimillionaire. I said multimillionaire. I've, I've created some billionaires, but I unfortunately am not one. I've owned fancy yachts, yes. fancy cars, yes. and underwater submersible. Airplane. Underwater you, airplane. I, 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 do you worry at How's all that it? you... Wait. <laughs> I'm not a billionaire. I just have a submarine slash airplane. No <laughs> way. You are divorced from reality. Are you divorced from reality? I, I don't know if anybody can answer that. Uh, can. Pause it. I can answer it. <laughs> you are divorced from reality. Uh, it is quite possible that no one can claim that they're not divorced from reality. But let me, um, let me uh, suggest this, that uh, when you go on a, a show to talk about um, comparing the destruction of uh, luxury car windows to Crystal Knock, you are divorced from reality. When you go on to show your human side, and make sure that you clarify that I just own millions and a plane that can go underwater, then you probably are divorced from reality. It's a bubble that has created, that has changed the world, it has created incredible wealth. And I think as I've distanced myself from the firm, there's been a, a corresponding uh, decline in the firm. In a way, I miss them. I hope they miss me. You mentioned your friend, Eugene Kleiner, right. late Eugene Kleiner, um, fled Austria, fled Hitler. Do you think he would have agreed with you? Oh, yes, I think he would have. And to demonize the rich who spend and buy things and, and stimulate the economy is crazy. And they got into a discussion about the idiocy of Rolex watches and why does any man need a Rolex watch? And it's just a symbol of of uh, terrible values and this isn't a Rolex I could buy a six-pack of Rolexes for this but so what it all started with complaints Plus, about getting back to do you think you're out of touch with reality <laughs> this this thing this ain't a Rolex I could buy a six-pack of Rolexes for what I spent on this one <laughs> I'm sorry what was the question continue the height of her hedge around her house, and then got into that she writes uh, pot boilers and is a snob and so forth. So I thought since I'm a knight, I'm a literal knight of the kingdom of Norway, I would get on my horse and charge forth in her defense. Ooh, um, speaking of not in touch with reality, 
Knights of Norway. <laughs> Since I'm a knight of Norway, I thought I would come in defense of my ex-wife by riding on my horse and uh, writing an article in the Wall Street Journal, a letter to the Wall Street Journal. This guy's, I think, maybe on the verge of a breakdown, or I should say, in the wake of a breakdown. So we. Um, and that it could buy a six-pack of Rolexes. Oh, that's naughty. That was off the off the air. <laughs> You met it? Uh, it's called a Richard Mille. All right. And it was a gift from the Perini company because I built this big boat. Free lunches uh, keep people working during the lunch hour and so forth. So it's not all just uh, love and honey buns. But someone and using capitalism to create more housing is part of the solution. Uh, building the high rises is part of the solution. I have members of my own family that are you know, living in trailer parks. Uh, not my immediate. After all, it was not called Knob Hill for nothing. The Nababs lived there and the floods and the Huntington's and all things like the San Francisco Ballet, which I basically ran for one year long ago. Um, when I look back, you know, those $1970 uh, that I was spreading around are now only worth five cents. So. If we use that multiplier factor, I've given away one hell of a lot of money. You were called the king of Silicon Valley, I believe, at one point. How would you describe yourself? <laughs> oh, I certainly have enough arrogance to be royal. <laughs> wow. This guy. You know what happens if the uh, the wealthy like him are attacked and they are... They are taxed out of existence. That money doesn't go away. In fact, that money's far more likely to be spent. So maybe he should get on his knight's horse and just ride away. As I said yesterday, he's insane from being off the meds he was never on. There you go.